Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on today's show, I'm pleased to have now, typically, this is the first time I ha I'm having a baseball person on this season, as last year I was able to have a bunch, trying to gather as much people as I can. So this will be the first baseball person that I have on here, Josh Rose, the head coach of Litchfield. It's great to be able to have you on, man. Oh, I'm honored. All right. First one of the season. Excited. Ready to go. Yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> After 20 minutes of trying to figure out technology. You know, it is, but rather we get it, you know, than, than have to cancel it and, you know, not do anything. So, no, I just appreciate you having me and, and dealing with me and cooperating with me through this whole uh, technology process. <laughs> it's awesome, dude. But, you know, obviously, you know, with you being able to have the opportunity with Litchfield, and we'll get into that later on, um, I kind of want to dive in deeper to, the past as far as your playing you know career I know you told me you played Roger Williams also played at Fairfield a little different than Litchfield the FC act to Berkshire League it's kind of like honey and oil it's a little different there uh just kind of well, take me into how baseball you know how did baseball find you you know uh, it, it was Fairfield, I think it was almost like predetermined, you know, like Fairfield, a very baseball town, um, you know, obviously the, the little league, you know, Fairfield American, Fairfield National, there's a great rivalry there. I played on the, the, the American side, but, um, you know, growing up, my, my mom was a, was a big Yankee fan. You know, we were just talking about the Yankees, you know, they are, you know, she was a big Yankee fan and that was, you know, my draw to baseball immediately, um, you know, and, and I got to go to Fairfield Ludlow when, when the, when the school was almost brand new. You know, I think I was, one of the second or third classes to kind of go through there. Um, and, uh, and so I played for Keith O'Rourke at Fairfield Ludlow, you know, and he's a, he's a great program builder. He's been a great mentor to me, you know, in, in high school and beyond, even, even to this day, um, you know, and, uh, and I, I built those, that competitive love of the game. Um, you know, I, I was a pitcher. I, I played first base. I caught, I played third. I was a little, a little too big to, to play the outfield and run around even in a little league outfield. But, um, but no, I, I, I just fell in love with the game, you know, at such a young age, um, you know, just, I remember just like hitting, hitting into a, like a net or, um, or throwing in my pitch back and just feeling that, that love, you know, I, you know, again, it's pouring outside today, but you know, when, when the, when the weather changes, you know, and the, the ground gets a little bit muddy, you know, people are like, eh, you know, like, oh, no, it's, it's baseball season, you know, <laughs> baseball in new England. You know, I, I remember that was a big thing, you know, growing up that, you know, we love baseball in New England when it's 29 degrees out and it's snowing and, you know, you've really got to love the game, you know, to, to play it up here. Um, so now I, I, I just grew up with it. You know, I remember one of my first memories is, is a T-ball memory um, playing in Fairfield. And, you know, I was told to, you know, you run through first base. So there you go. And I ran, ran through first base into the outfield across the street to the playground uh, where my grandmother had to come get me. Um, and, and from that point on, um, you know, I, I, they, they brought me all the way back to first base and, you know, and, and I just kind of fell, fell in love with it, um, from there. Now, obviously the game of baseball has, you know, if you, there's more failure than success. I mean, if you, if you had, if you get three hits out of 10, that's 300, you do that throughout the entirety of your career, you're a hall of famer, you know, obviously pitching, especially now, you know, you can make the case that maybe a little bit easier because now than it was back then, because everyone throws a hundred everybody's got nasty breaking stuff. I mean, I was watching the Yankee game earlier and I felt like I was watching a bunch of strikeouts again, Gallo, Stan, you name it, Aaron Hicks over and over a bunch of strikeouts, you know, the three true outcomes, walk strikeouts and home runs um, for you as now you've started to, because like I said, you played a Roger Williams, had a good career. You're able to find your home. Now, as you kind of move towards the coaching side, now being with Litchfield and you see how the game, because let's be honest, because you're not that much older than me. Um, <laughs> we got almost to like when we were younger, the game was played one way. And then ever since analytics and, you know, Moneyball kind of got into that, but ever since it really has been full on analytics, probably even more so than with what Moneyball was trying to preach. The game has taken such a quick turn, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, cause I work so closely with the little leagues. Right. And so we, there's almost, it's almost a different game. Right. When, when we're playing at these different levels, right. At little league, um, right. We're trying to teach contact. Right. And, and usually the, the best player can do a lot of different things in the field just because of the, the size of the field. Then, then you get to middle school and high school where right, every kids are finding their, their age, you know, they're trying to find their position. 
Um, they're trying to find their, their fit on the field. Um, and then we go to college professional, right? And we're seeing again, right? These, these huge numbers, right? Kind of where numbers are dictating uh, building of lineups, uh, building of pitching staffs, um, even building of coaching staffs. So, uh, you know, in, in high school, I love to use, uh, use numbers, you know, but to our advantage, um, right? We can, we can get too bogged down in them, right? I, I use the Game Changer app, right? I, I love Game Changer, right? It gives me all of these great numbers. It gives me ERA and WHIP and batting average, you know, batting average with runners in scoring position and two outs, you know, it gives me all of this data. Um, but as a high school coach, you can, you can get lost in those numbers a little bit, you know, in, instead of just watching and getting the feel of the game. Um, you know, I, I think that's something that I, I, I don't want to lose, you know, as a coach, you know, you don't want to lose, you know, when, when you watch and, you know, when someone strikes out, but they have a great swing, you know, and, and being able to coach them on an everyday basis um, or, or teaching guys, um, you know, how to properly, you know, set their feet or, you know, how to use their hips or, you know, certain things. Um, but we were, just, I mean, even my assistant coaches, we were talking about, um, you know, making contact, you know, making contact is a huge part of the high school game, you know, in, in, in college and the pros, you, you can strike it. You can swing and miss three times because every guy in that lineup can go up and hit the ball, you know, 300 plus feet for a home run and get two or three RBIs in one swing. You know, high school is, is a very different, especially in the BL, right? In, in the FCAC, right? In, in the, um, in the, some of the NBL teams, right? That we see up in this area, there are guys, right? That can step up and, and hit the ball out of the ballpark or, or drive gap to gap in almost every at bat. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm stressing with my guys, we want to put bat on ball, you know, as, as a pitcher. We, we want to let guys put the bat on the ball, you know, less, less pitches, you know, those are the numbers that I'm looking for, right? Can, can we put the ball in play and how, how few pitches can my pitching staff throw? Um, so, I mean, th but the numbers are, are, I, I do, they're fascinating. I was never, I'm, I'm not a math guy, uh, but, but saber metrics, I, I could talk them all day long. I, I, I love talking baseball numbers. I think you and my guy who coaches at Tallinn, and coach Deach, Howie Deach should probably connect somehow because he's a big guy into analytics and it's funny because like and he you know like I said he's my guy and sometimes he'll he'll yeah. reach out to me about a certain stat and I'm not big into I'm big in the contact more than some other I know obviously the home run is nice obviously the big flashy it's okay. it, it helps yeah I mean it helps <laughs> but there's some things that I see and I'm like just get it away I don't want to I don't want to see any of that and I think one of the biggest things, and my question for you is, you have these young men and women, if there's some who do play on baseball teams, um, that see the game being played as is, and let's just be honest, walks, strikeouts, home runs. There's uh, Brian Kenny, who's the guru of stats, who I used to watch way back when, before I lost, and I, I, don't, I actually don't have MLB Network anymore, so I can't watch it. But he brought up a really interesting stat that over the course of, I think it was 2014 or 2015 up until the present time. So that was what, 20, 2021 was the last time I saw this, that singles per game were dropping. The average swing and miss was going up. You had strikeouts. I think it was last season, maybe two seasons ago, where there were more strikeouts in a month than there was during entire season back in like the seventies or the eighties or whatever. Mm -hmm. I keep rambling off. So I apologize. Yep. The point no, I'm trying please. to say is the game, these kids see this, how difficult is it to not tell Johnny, no, you can't have a launch angle of 22 degrees or 20 degrees, because let's be honest, you can't hit the ball 200 yards or 200 feet, but you're very good at making contact and you have good back control and you can pepper everywhere, but because that's not sexy and that's not something that, draws the eyes they don't want to do that how difficult is that for you as a coach you know it's I think I have a unique experience especially in my community um I taught most of my players when they were 12 and 13 years old you know and and we you know we've had formative memories before you even stepped on the field together right so they know that I always have their best interests at heart right no matter if I'm running them right or if we're, if we're going over a drill for the 14th time that day, right. And, I, and their parents are all yelling at me from the parking lot because I want to make sure we get this last thing done and we do it right. Mm -hmm. um, but right. Always putting the team first, right. Trying to find a way, right. To convince our program that the team, 
right? That the team success is more important than individual success. That is, that is always our, our number one goal, right? So I never, I never try to talk to a player about their individual swing um, unless it's, unless there's something that is, there's such a large gap or such, such a, a deficiency, um, right. I, I was talking with one freshman the, the other day about, right. He's just kind of right. Stepping, stepping in the, in the bucket, right. As we call, right. He's just kind of pulling himself out and he's cutting off the whole opposite side of the field. All right. So, so if we can talk on in, in individual, like big things like that, but I always like to talk situational. If you're in our program, you have to be able to do everything. Um, what uh, we, we grad Aiden Donahue graduated last year, right? And he was a huge piece of our team. He was the four hitter on our team. He's our number one starter, right? He's playing at Johnston and Wales right now, right? And we love him to death. And he's such a great, great young man. But he had to know how to bunt, right? Like the, there, there are coaches, right? That that'll say like, my four hitter's never going to bunt. I'm never going to. He's never going to have to. But we're going to make it a point that every single player in, in our team, whether you're the four hitter, whether you're the number one starter, right? You need to be able to do every single thing. Um, you, every single player needs to be able to hit a cut from the outfield, right? Because my, my roster is not going to be what it was at when I was in high school, right? I had, we had 18 guys when I was in high school, right? On the varsity team, right? Mm -hmm. And another 15 at the JV and another 18 at the, at the freshman. I have 15 players in my program period. Right. Like we, everybody has to be able to do every single thing on the field. Right. And I think when we teach it from that approach, anybody can almost do anything at any time. And, and that means, right. You have to just be able to do everything that is required of you. I think it's, a, it's almost a harder job, right. The level of play right down South in the state is going to be a higher level. There's going to be more talent because there's more kids and more competition, but I, I'd say coaching in the BL might, might be a little bit more difficult because we're, we're teaching a lot of the skills um, and having to make sure that every player is growing because if every single player on, in your program isn't growing, your varsity team isn't growing and isn't winning. So um, I, I think also the approach of talking about, again, that is a very different game. You know, when, when we, when we're seeing guys, you know, throw a hundred plus miles an hour, right. Once, once we get to that point, you know, then you can start coaching me, right. You can start teaching me things, but until that point, right, let's, let's all get on the same page together um, instead of, right, one guy up here and one guy down here. Let's, let's at least find a basic set of skills that we can all do and then grow from there. I almost feel like to coach that and what really kind of speaking of, you know, I don't know if you're a Yankee fan. I mean, I think you're a Yankee fan. I mean, yes, sir. Too. So when I'm watching Michael K and whoever's with him and they're talking about the Yankee lineup and they're going through it and they're, you know, having their spiel. And they talk about the fact of the bunting aspect. Mm -hmm. And I think it was last year, the Yankees had, if not the lowest, probably the lowest of all, as far as players who bunted, they didn't have anybody yeah. who bunted, but yep. I remember, I want to say it was Houston. It was Maldonado and where mm -hmm. he was batting in the order for Houston at the time. I think it was in the playoffs. He bunted or no, maybe no, no, it was the Dodgers. It was okay. Barnes, the catcher. He bunched right. was against, uh, it was against Tampa. That was during the COVID year. Mm -hmm. And I sat there thinking to myself, like, okay, he's a premier bat who can hit the ball, who can do anything. But his manager told him to bunt, and he did it like he's done it a thousand times. But then I watched the Yankees, who can't even attempt one bunt unless you're Brett Gardner, and Brett Gardner's not even on the team anymore. So I'm coming to you with the question of, I love the fact that you are having your players, like you said, you only have 15. It's not like you have, like you said, when you were back at Fairfield Ludlow, you've got 18 yeah. at the varsity, 15 at JV, another 20 at freshman. You got 15 and that's it. To have them all be so, uh, to steal the, the, you know, the Ben Zobris term, to have that super utility ability to not just bunt, if they can steal, they have, yep. if, depending on the green light, yellow light, red light, if they got the opportunity, get some bases, cause wreak havoc on defense. Is it safe to say that striking out is probably one of the things that you hate the most or am I wrong? <laughs> um, you know what? Yes and no. Yes and no. Um, right. If we're having a great at bat, right. If, if we're going to battle and we're going to swing and we're going to take that, you know, the, the, the stick off our shoulder, um, you know, and, and we strike out, right. I'm right. It's, there's always that, that adage. I know we're in high school, right. But the other team gets paid too, 
right? Like they're, they're here to compete too. Right. And there, there are some guys where we just got to tip our cap and say, you know what? Yeah. Right. You, 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 you just spotted up on a curveball, right. You just froze me on a fastball, right. You just made me chase because, you know, you buried two curveballs and I swung at those. Um, but striking out, uh, looking, uh, it, 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 it does, it boils my blood, right. Because at that point we we've almost lost that competitive juice, right? Like I, the, the, the attitude that I love to instill my players for, is that, right. If you, you're going to have to beat me, right. I'm not going to just let you win. You're going to have to beat me. Um, and again, if you do, if you beat me, right. And I gave my full effort, I'm going to tip my cap, right. And say, Hey, well, that's a heck of a game. Um, but if I let you win, right. If I, if I let you just take this from me, right. That that's a different level of, of loss. Um, so I, I, I always, accountability is something, right. That I always talk with my players and even, even every pitch in the cage, right. If there's a close pitch when, when we're thrown in the cage I said, Hey, wh where's our head at on that pitch, right. That, that looked pretty good. Right. And if they give me a great explanation, Hey coach, I'm, I'm taking a two-o approach right now. That's not my pitch. Great. Thank you. Right. But if they said, eh, you know, I could have swung. Well, Hey, let, let's talk about that. Right. Let's have a conversation about why we didn't swing at that one. Cause if you didn't swing at it in the cage, we're probably not going to swing at it in the game. So if the umpire is going to call it a strike, we better at least be prepared for that pitch and know when it's coming and know how to hit it and where to hit it. Um, so striking out swinging, um, I'll, I'll, I'll live with that. I'll live with that one. Um, I would rather see us hit a ground ball. Right. I'd rather see us. I'd, I'd much right ground ball. My, my high school Keith O'Rourke always said, they got to make two plays, right? You got to field it and you got to throw it. Um, a fly ball, you only got to catch it, right? It's only, it's only one play. Um, and with a strikeout, it just, you better poke catch it and catch the ball um, or, or keep it in front of them. Um, but when, if we strike out swinging, that's going to be a different kind of conversation when I talk to my players. And it's always, it's always a learning curve um, when we're dealing with, you know, 14 and 15 year olds, even 17 and 18 year olds. Um, but I, I love, those are the conversations that I love because that's, that's the growth, right? As a teacher, Right. That those are those conversations when it when when someone doesn't do so well in an assignment, we pull and we pull them to the side and said, hey, you know, let's let's go over this because I know I know you're better than this. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I know how how much potential you have. So bring it next time. Right. And with baseball, sometimes if, if it's the next at bat, right, it can be 20 minutes later. If it's the next game, it could be two days from now. So mm -hmm. um, but those are those moments where we really get the most learning, like you were talking about earlier in our failures, right? In our failures, that's where we learn the most. So um, that, that's really where, uh, again, it's, right, it's kind of a double-edged sword, I guess, right? That I, I never want to see my guy strike out looking, but when we do, we can have that conversation and learn from it so it doesn't happen next time. I want to go to the pitching side because I know obviously you being a former pitcher, myself yep. being a former pitcher, uh, I could talk pitching all day and I love the fact of being able to kind of brainstorm here. So yep. looking at the high school side, I know that obviously – there's going to be, I think, more often than not, you're not going to have the pristine mechanics. You're not going to have pitchers who are going to be able to, at least no matter if they're freshmen or seniors, be just because of where they are developmentally, mm -hmm. being able to have the, you know, the three pitches as a starter, making right. sure they have that change up, making sure they have the feel of their curveball, uh, being able to have, as I mentioned, the mechanical side to make it look pretty. For you, coach, how tough is it to, because – I can tell you right now, I'm sure when Scherzer was pitching in high school, when Chris Sale was pitching in high school, um, I could probably name a bunch of others too who have really weird and bad mechanics. But I know obviously Chris Sale has been hurt of late, but let's be honest, there wasn't any problems with either of them for a long time until after all the innings and the wear and tear. So how difficult is it for you to watch i'll go back to johnny again so i hope there's nobody on your team named johnny so, <laughs> no you're set okay so if you go to johnny and you see he's a right hander who's just got he's opening up he's flying his arm is dragging uh he's got all these different arm angles because he can't find one but somehow some way he's finding the glove it's just spotting it's there how hard is it for you to be like i don't want to mess up what he has because it works for him and if i start to tinker with him then I take away what is making Johnny, Johnny, the pitcher. Yeah. You know, uh, what a good question. Uh, ability is it, it's, it never reads on the stat sheet. Right. Um, but you can see it, right. Kind of going again, going back to that, that idea, that feel of the game. Um, I love film. Film is a great tool. 
Um, so I, we, one of during pitcher catcher week, you know, we, we had some different groups going on and, and I took some of these guys into, into my classroom and, and we watched film, um, of ourselves and of, of these guys at the professional level. And we thought, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, Kershaw, you know, and we're watching some of his, you know, some of his stuff and we're looking at Scherzer and we looked at, you know, I mean, one of the great ones, we looked at Maddox, right. And how like tight his, his motions are and things like that. Um, you know, and I have like a few you know, things for guys who, again, are, are having, you know, trouble having success, right? The less movement, the less mistakes we're going to make, um, you know, let's turn our, right. Let's turn our butt cheek a little bit to drive a little bit off the back leg, get a bit, little bend in that back leg, but um, results really are, are the thing that matter the most on the field, right? So if, if a guy is throwing strikes and the ball staying down, um, my job is, is right. Is, is to manage, right. Is to manage that. Um, if a guy's not throwing strikes, my job is to coach that. So, you know, I think that's where I, I do my best to let my players demonstrate what they can do. And then I need to go from there, right? I can't, if I teach them the way that I had success, that's, that's one way. Um, but if I, I can watch them and see what they do well and help build on their successes, then we can each have individual success, which will be to the team success. So, um, you know, there's always, there's always a few things that everybody needs to work on, right? Freshmen always need to, right, throw their change up harder than their fastball, right? Like, it's just, right, it's just kind of that arm drag, like we were talking about. That's just something that, right, they just usually kind of, they're trying to get it there instead of throwing it through the catcher. Um, you know, some guys can't connect their front side to their back side, right? Which, again, those are just mechanical things. But if someone had, you know, the uh, a lower arm slot, you know, I, I want to work with that, you know? Um, if someone... Um, wants to try some different pitch count, some different pitch grips and things like that. Let's, let's work with that. Let's not um, hold people back. Uh, let's, let's try things out, but let's do it in the right environment, right? We shouldn't be trying our first slider ever, you know, in, in a three, two count in the seventh inning. Um, but, but there are bullpens, right? We throw bullpens, we have sides, we have, you know, uh, relief time, we have JV games, you know, where we can work on these different types of things. So, um, Right. The, the time and the place, I think, is, is a huge thing for um, for that type of thing. But uh, but no, making sure that every player builds on the things they're good on and maybe understands how something might lead to a, a possible injury. Right. Because that's always, you know, my, my safety, health and safety of players is my always my number one concern. Right. We I was I was always taught, you know, if we if we keep the elbow above our shoulder, we're, we're going to be OK. Right. On on, on labrum, on, on, on Tommy John, UCL type injuries. But the, but it's always changing. Right. When I was when I was younger, they said, right, we need to take like three to five months off from throwing. Right. To, to let your arm rest. Now you're, you're supposed to kind of throw throughout the year to kind of build that muscle. Right. Like we use our legs every single day. Right. We don't, I don't run a marathon every day, but I use my legs every day to train them. Um, not, not to say that I'm going to run a marathon anytime soon. Um, oh goodness. I, I would have just put that out there in the universe. So, um, but yeah, making sure that every, every player is, is healthy and safe because again, 20, 20 games, someone, someone gets hurt. That's, that's very quickly a, a, an entire season. So um yeah especially you try especially too because you got to consider that 20 games in a matter of what nine to ten weeks whatever it is it may be even less than that you're trying mm -hmm. to play all those games then you also count if you qualify for the CIC state tournament which you guys are in class s there's a lot of very good teams we talked about it i was surprised to see he's catholic there they're in class s i thought they were a little bit higher but they dropped i guess uh, maybe, yeah. maybe maybe losing Mazzucato was a big drop for them going from, you know, wherever they were to that. But either way, it's like a couple, couple players, you know? Yeah. You know, they <laughs> lost that. Well, they lost a lot. I mean, I know they have yeah. one of their top pitchers who's coming back. That was second mm -hmm. to Mazzucato. Um, They're okay. always very talented. Their head coach, you know, I talked to him on Twitter. He's a very nice guy and I'm sure he'll have them ready as always. Uh, you know, we talked about Thomason and Terryville, mm -hmm. obviously St. Paul with, you know, my former uh, Legion ball coach at Oakville, he's now their head coach and has been there for some time. Uh, he's a fantastic guy. Vic Rinaldi uh, knows the yep. game of baseball. I've told him that, you know, I told him in person when I was broadcasting St. Paul against Holy Cross during the winter that, you know, and he kind of looked shocked, but I was like, you taught me so much when I was a young, you know, ball player about just the game and seeing it in a different way. Um, but class S is very, very competitive. I mean, Coggenshaw, the reigning class S champion too. So, I'm sure stuff that you already know, but
but class mm-hmm. is not going to be easy as basically all the classes never are. Yeah, no, you know, we're, we do our best to, to focus, right. We, we try, we try to take the, these little steps, right. So, right. We want, we want, want to win the BL, right. And then obviously we want to, we want to win the state, right. Those, those, those are our goals every year. Right. So oh, there you go. Hey, that was, that was like, that was, <laughs> that was only, we're, we're 20 minutes into this. Look at that. Okay. All right. Only one glitch. Um, <laughs> no, you know, with my, uh, looked up to, um, to coaches, right. To, to players and pro, like programs. I think there's a difference between a team and a program, right. I think you're talking about right. Vic at, at St. Paul, he runs a program, right. Yep. Not just a team. Right. Um, I think coach Workhoven, right. At Chapog, I think he runs a program and not just a team. And, you know, I think that's something that I'm trying to emulate my, my program a- after, um, you know, cause the, the BL, it, it is so competitive, you know, and, and a lot of these guys, it's so cool to see, you know, I was just a baseball player. Right. So I, I knew the baseball players in the FCAC, but I didn't know like the basketball players, the football players. Mm-hmm. Um, right? All of these guys play all, all these sports against each other. Right. They all play soccer. Right. So- soccer, basketball and baseball seem to be the big three sports um, in the BL. And so, right. They know each other. Right. It's, it's very um, NBA esque. Right. Where they're kind of like friendly. Right. They, they see each other so often. Um, so playing in the BL and playing against all these S schools. Right. Um, it, it, it is a, it's a challenge, um, to, to kind of figure out who's, who's who and what's what as a, as a coach, but I get a lot from my players, you know, um, I get a lot from, from watching these guys play basketball and things like that. Um, watch them go to, go into the soccer games and seeing, you know, I remember, I remember seeing some guys from Northwest and seeing some guys from Chapog and seeing how they track from different sports. I'm like, okay, this is, this is kind of cool. Um, but no, we're, I really love to focus, you know, uh, on the BL, you know, uh, when I go outside the BL, right. With, the, with our S schools, we're, uh, we can be outmatched at times, you know, you know, one of, one of our great, my greatest experiences, you know, in, in baseball was, was playing against, uh, Plainville last year, you know, when, when they were the, they were the sixth seed, you know, and, and we, we went up all the way, you know, it was a, almost a two hour bus ride. Um, you know, we, we didn't know where we were walking into. And I think maybe that was, that was a good thing you know, and, and we ended up, you know, beating them on their home field. Um, and then we go to North Brantford, right. It's a place where I'm a little bit more familiar with and right. They, they were ready to go. And we, I think we had just, we, we won our state title in that first game. You know, we were a seven, 12, seven and 12 team. We snuck in there. Um, but being from the BL, we're like, we're on a little Island up there and up in there in Litchfield, Litchfield County. So, um, you know, stay focusing on the BL, focusing on our, on our home and homes, right. Against our, our teams, you know, that's really, where um you know metaphorically we can kind of make, make our money and then if when it, whenever we get out of the bl you know we're I'm going to go to we're going to play torrington i believe they're are they in, are they in m are they in l are they uh, double are they quadruple l i don't know i have to look but um but you know we, we get our we get our little ones again i was i was excited to play i was supposed to play vic um yesterday you know that that's they were supposed to come to our field and that, we were we were so close but they uh, the, again the rain was just a little bit but playing seeing those teams you know and and, and raising the level of, of our program, right. When we play these teams um, is really, is really important to me. You know, I, I love great, playing great competition is, is always good. No matter, no matter the class. Coach, it's great to be, uh, you know, to have you on, I could talk to you forever and hopefully I could have you back on uh, sometime hopefully. in the future. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. No, I I'd love to, I'd love to check in, you know, sometime during the season after the season, you know, hopefully, hopefully I still have this positive attitude. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I appreciate you having me on and talking a little, little, a uh, little ball with me, even, even after our, a little technological debacle there at the beginning and, and even a little one here. So no, I, I appreciate it so much. Thanks for having me. No problem. I'll wrap things up here in the Connecticut sports talent show. So until next time, stay safe. MRCT stands for Connecticut talent and I'm going to find them all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody and be well.